there are no bad cameras. Actually, there are so many good cameras. So many that the variety itself makes it harder to find what you really want. And the more you venture into gear, the less confident you are that what you have is the right gear. This is how we end up with a small museum on our bookshelves. Personally, I like to live frugally. That's why I bought a Leica M. Well, actually, the reason I got into Leica M's was because I thought the M system's diversity was fascinating. I spoke a couple of videos ago about the plethora of experiences there are between the hundreds of lenses available with an M mount. And it's insane. Every lens feels different because of the diversity of materials, design philosophies, and build tolerances. And there are just as many rendering styles as well. You get lenses with swirly bokeh, heavy vignetting, discolored corners, soft glow, bright colors, heavy contrast. If you can think of it, you can find it in M mount. However, one approach always gets a bad rep. It usually sounds like this. Well, optically it's really great, probably even better than lenses that cost twice as much, but it's too clinical. I'd rather have the flaws. The Sumerit line was an oddity within the Leica range. It received two generations, an f2.5 and later an f2.4 refresh, although all the lenses seem to have kept the same optics, despite the change in body. These lenses were introduced likely with the intention of competing against lower priced offerings from Voigtlander and Zeiss, which while not performing that similarly to the range of Leica lenses, were perfectly adequate for just about anything any photographer would ever want to do. Sumerits weren't exactly cheap however. At retail they were still multiple times the price of Voigtlanders. Personally, I don't think that really counted as direct competition. Maybe only in comparison to other Leica glass is a Sumerit considered budget. Alas, the Sumerit line has been discontinued, probably due to low sales, and it may well serve as a lesson to Leica about what people look for when they are shopping these days. These Sumerits are objectively better made than the Voigtlanders, and in my opinion, they are much better put together than the Zeiss lineup. However, to most photographers, even the great ones, this probably doesn't matter as much as things like f2 or f1.4. Leica may have had the idea that consumers would seriously consider slower lenses with much higher objective optical quality over faster lenses, and that idea would almost always be proven wrong. Like it or not, people love bokeh, and they see fast glass as inherently good. So f2.5 on a 35 or even a 50mm might not be enough. And people all want the safety net of f1.4 when the sun goes down. I shoot almost exclusively at f5.6 to f16, but I'll admit that when I'm shopping for a lens to use long term, the luxury of 1.4 is enticing, especially at Voigtlander prices. Now while these Sumerits lose to Voigtlander in aperture, they definitely win in objective image quality. They are very well corrected and sharp lenses, with plenty of contrast, honest color reproduction, and when it matters, all right bokeh. I find that the only area of issue is in the 50mm when shooting in bright light, where it flares surprisingly easily even at small apertures. Overall, one could say that the rendering of these lenses is transparent. They don't impart a character or a look to your photography. They simply plaster what is in front of you onto your sensor. Some people call lenses like the Zeiss Planner very clinical, but I think these Sumerits fit that word much more. The Zeiss lenses are very sharp and punchy, and I wouldn't put it past anyone to identify which images in any set are taken with a Zeiss lens. Sure. They don't have their own unique swirly bokeh or soft edges like more characterful lenses, but they are definitely not without their own fingerprint. The Sumerits on the other hand, I think are closer in their look to Nikons and Canons of our age than any of the other M offerings I've tried so far. Color wise, I can't say that they are warm or cool, but somewhere in the happy middle. And while the sharpness and contrast are there, they don't have the same levels of micro contrast or 3D pop that you would find in a Sumicron or a Zeiss. The lenses are inoffensive. They are no nonsense. And that might be Leica's second mistake with the Sumerit line, assuming that Leica customers would consider a clinical approach to lenses. Granted, in post you can do anything you want with color. Despite the oversights in designing the lower end of their product line, Leica still created a couple great products here that enable their owners to just go out and take pictures. These lenses balance well on an M240. The two controls operate like butter, and the black chrome finish matches the touch of the chrome finish bodies. Yeah, you can bolt on any M mount lens and it'll focus, meter and take pictures. But there is definitely something to be said about how good M mount glass and bodies feel together. I realize that this doesn't affect what your photography looks like. But the experience of using your camera can be drastically changed by something as inconsequential as the dampening of a focus ring. So where do these lenses belong? How do they fit into this complex ecosystem? 
Well, it's important to know the difference between right for the market and right for photographers. It really is difficult to market an f2.5 lens for $3,000. Who would even be attracted to that? But even if the Leica magic is mostly hype and fluff, it isn't trivial to build a lens to Leica standards. If you need proof of this, just hold a Zeiss and Voigtlander for a few minutes. As great as Casina does with them, there's still a difference. In the end, I think it was a bit of a shame that these lenses didn't survive. For photographers, they were a more moderately priced, compact alternative that more than kept up with the Summicron range. For the company, this was Leica dipping their toes into more mainstream products. Leica probably thought the biggest danger was pricing these lenses too affordably, risking further dilution of a brand that was already stamping its name on Panasonic Lumixes, and giving these lenses a rendering too close to their Summicron siblings would risk cannibalizing more profitable sales. However, there's nothing about these lenses that should preclude them from any photographer's consideration when building their kit. Having the 35 and the 50 is a quick and easy way to have a cohesive look in two versatile focal lengths. And having both would be less of a financial burden than having a single Sumalux. Both these lenses are highly regarded optically, and the usual criticism is that they are too good for most people to want in their kits. Crazy world we live in. The word clinical often carries a negative connotation in the world of photography. That's a shame. Clinical is objectively good. Clinical gives you a great base on which to process. Clinical is worth paying for. There are so many good options in the M-mount world, from purposely flawed to wonderfully characterized. The Sumerits employed an approach that was different. They were made to a budget, but retained Leica's drive for tight tolerances and optical quality. They introduced Leica to a new fundamental approach to lens production. They are not endgame lenses, nor are they halo products, but they give you every opportunity to make great pictures and explore. You should give them a chance, as I did, because...